Okay, hello and welcome to the Wolfram Language Image Processing Virtual Workshop 2015. My name is Shadi Ashnai. I'm the manager of image processing here at Wolfram. With me here today is Marcus van Olmsek, our longtime consultant. We will be using the Wolfram Language functions to show how to tackle fun and simple, as well as serious and often complex problems encountered in image processing. In the first talk, uh, I'll show a few one or almost one-liners. In the second talk, Marcus will show a few different techniques to measure and visualize the heartbeat via video processing. Time permitting, we can take a few questions before we move to the second part of the workshop. So feel free to post your questions in the Q&A pod at the bottom of your screen. Um, after that, for the second half of the workshop, we would like to take a chance to give a rapid image processing tutorial. Um, this will include things that anyone needs to know in order to be able to solve real problems um, using the provided image processing tools. Uh, we will explain concepts such as filtering segmentation, morphological operations, and a lot more. Uh, we will finish with a Q&A session. We will collect your questions from the very beginning, uh, anything that is posted to it to, to the Q&A pod, so please uh, post your questions there. Okay, getting started on Wolfram language one-liners for image processing. There are various ways of accessing images in Mathematica. Um, simple old ways of importing local files or even URLs that are um, stored on the web uh, have been typical. Uh, newer ways such as accessing images that are on social media networks such as Facebook, for instance I'm getting my picture um, profile picture off of Facebook, or even searching for keywords such as sunset and mountain in, on Flickr um, and getting linked images back, which I can then go back and say, click on some of these ones uh, and go to Flickr website uh, for that particular image. We are also connected to devices that are on the that are available through your machine. Uh, we can ask for devices, open them, and read images from them, or in short, the current image function that we have had for a long time. Uh, we have had freeform inputs, which is accessing a large collection of built-in data and images that are stored on our servers, and you can ask for an image of any picturable entity, such as this American short hair cat. Um, along the same lines, you can access uh, people data that we have in Mathematica and say, uh, what are the notable people, say, in Chicago, and ask for their images, occupations, and, and get the result back and do further processing. These are all accessible, um, accessible through Mathematica and um, can be done as the first way of accessing images for further processing. And of course, generating images from data, um, like creating a table of different intensity values or using some of the built-in data, like a constant image of a, of a given color, or a shade of uh, different colors on the rainbow color data uh, in a radial gradient way, or even texture synthesis from a texture that was given um, using our new um, texture synthesis available in ImagePad, which can basically take a smaller pattern and enlarge it, basically texture synthesize a larger image. So various ways of getting images into Mathematica, but now what can be done with all of these images? Of course, a lot. Um, in, in, um, let, let's get started with a few fun um, applications with color. Say you have a pattern, and you want to change the colors of that pattern based on another image, reference image, that has been, um, that has been captured elsewhere. Um, and, and you can see that I'm doing something like clustering components, which is a segmentation, and then colorizing based on the dominant colors that I extract from that photo and a new texture with different colors is coming back. Or I can do selective coloring, which is a very common task in computational photography and creating effects and photos. Uh, here I'm asking for um, a shade of green to be highlighted. And the same thing can be interactive, and I can say that the color under my locator is the color of interest, so highlight that color or objects of that color in particular and change everything else to green. And in one of our newer functions, we can take a, a, a series of different images with different exposures and combine them so that a good exposed image is returned as a result. Another 
a very common task in image processing is separating fo foreground and background. And here I'm showing our super function remove background, which can take objectives like as the background is green, now separate foreground from background. Or my background is blurred, and I know s roughly what's the size of the blur that is affected that image, so separate foreground from background. Or different other different ways, like knowing the color of background and some sort of a threshold or distance to that color, uh, which can then, the result, be used um, to get combined with something like this random image that I've got uh, from entity value of different cloud types and compose the separated foreground background image on the top uh, with this with this new image that I just extracted. Another set of things that can be done in Mathematica are transformations, geometric transforms. Different things can be done using functions like image transformation or perspective transform and effects like creating a photo mosaic or creating a fisheye effect are um, common and well-known techniques for, uh, for transforming or warping images. And of course, unwarping would be another wanted thing, uh, which if you have uh, an inverse of the function, you can apply it to the warped image and get an unwarped image. There has been some focus on creating collages in Mathematica. Uh, for instance, here I'm extracting a bunch of thumbnails from example data, all the test images that are stored and built in in Mathematica, and creating a collage of the whole collection just to see and get a sense of what is in that collection. Or for instance, I can ask for all, all the notable artworks by Picasso and, uh, and create a collage of all of those in Mathematica. And of course, the data has to be downloaded from, from the servers and create that. Now, if I want to make a visual or visualization that tells me uh, what is the relative sizes of these paintings, I can ask for something, some measure like area uh, in that entity value and create a weighted collage per se. Um, and, and this is showing how big are or how relatively big are the paintings by Picasso. Similarly, I can ask for flags and populations and put them together in a collage to visualize the word population um, they, uh, with, with their flags. Well, in this case, I'll just, I'll just leave this for a later evaluation by, uh, by you since the notebooks are going to be available. Now, what, what does Mathematica offer in the world of uh, object detection and recognition? Um, say I have an image of uh, some people and I can easily extract faces and highlight them on top of the original image. Um, or, in fact, I can anonymize the images by blurring the faces um, that, that were detected. Also, text can be recognized and often some texts that are scanned are uh, having some bad illuminations, which, which makes the OCR pretty difficult. And other filters are available in Mathematica to get rid of and remove that uh, uneven illumination so that the good text can be detected. Barcode detection has been added. Not only the, the detection of the barcode itself, but the format and bounding box can also be recognized um, and even passed to highlight image to be, um, to be visualized. Um, and of course, not only UPC, which is a common, but also QR and many other barcode formats are available in, in Mathematica. Um, along the lines of identification, we have recently added Image Identify, which can tell what object is presented in an image. And uh, of course, if you want to have different specificities, uh, similar to many of the other functions in Mathematica, one can define what specificity goal is desired so that you can go from very general categories to fairly, um, um, to, to fairly detailed categories. And you can also ask for different recognitions. For instance, a, an object could be recognized or identified, um, an image could be identified with different objects and probabilities of the object in the image being one of these entities can be extracted. And, um, and there are different utilities like Word Cloud that can take these probabilities and weights and these entity numbers and visualize 
uh, what is identified in the image. Classify has been, of course, another big um, improvement uh, in, in Mathematica uh, in the category of machine learning that images and computer vision have also benefited a lot, a, a lot from. Uh, for instance, here I have a training data set, the MNIST training data set for handwritten digit uh, recognition. I pass that to classify as in different categories, and I get a classifier function back. That classifier function can get applied to different images to recognize what digit was written in that image. Um, similar classification can happen to different images of different entities. For instance, here I have two collections of day and night that can then get applied to new images that weren't seen or passed to the classifier before, and these can be classified as day or night images. I showed a few fun examples, but of course, even in one line of Mathematica code, you can do things like segmenting the blood cells in an image, and even going one step further and selecting the ones that have um, smaller circularity and, and an area that is uh, restricted between some, some given values. Um, in this case, this um, computation gives us basically a selection of uh, star-like burst cells um, in this image. Um, there is also a lot in image series and more is coming. Um, for instance, here I'm downloading a data bin, uh, which was, um, th this also takes a bit longer, but uh, this, this is a series of uh, 300 plus images taken from a camera that was mounted in front of a fish tank, um, basically capturing images every 10-12 seconds from the fish tank and uh, seeing where these fish go, that there were two fish in the tank. Once the data set is loaded, uh, we can do a lot of things with it, like animating or um, combining to extract the background and so forth. Let's wait a second to see if the data set just gets downloaded. I see there is a question about how circularity is working. I can quickly go back to this slide and show the cell segmentation. So, um, so basically in this case, I have a segmentation of the blood cells and um, um, and you see that the orange segments are the ones that were ex extracted <clears throat> uh, through, this, through this segmentation line. Um, now, from all of these segments, the um, function select components is computing these properties that I'm asking for, uh, being area and circularity of, every of, our, of all of these components. And once those measures are computed and circularity um, uh, base, basically is uh, we are computing the area and the perimeter of the object and uh, estimating how circular is the shape, uh, how close is the object to a circle. And based on these two measures, uh, this last argument of the function select components is basically the crit criteria of selecting the components. So basically here we are saying I want the area to be between 1,000 and 2,600 pixels and I want the circularity to be smaller than 0.92. And these are the segments that were selected from that image. Okay, the, the fish tank data is downloaded. Um, now you can see here I'm showing the first four images of the data set. And uh, I can, as I said, animate the, um, the frames that were extracted. You see uh, that the fish were moving in the tank, of course. In order to remove the fish and get a good estimate of the background, I, um, I can basically combine all of the images with each other uh, which, uh, with, with, a, with a median measure, which basically gets rid of all the um, low occurring colors in each of the pixels and this would be a fairly good estimate of the background. And um, um, a typo here. And basically, in order to understand where the fish were most of the time, uh, I can combine these images um, to, uh, I can combine the difference of each frame and the background together and basically uh, get, um, get, an, get a heat map of where the fish had spent most of their time during, uh, during the um, acquisition time. Now, 
Until now, I show more of the 2D images or all of it were 2D images. But of course, we have introduced uh, 3D images into Mathematica a couple of versions back. And uh, almost everything that can be done with 2D images can also be done with 3D images. For instance, here I have a um, single volumetric data uh, that can be segmented with morphological components. And then with component measurements, I can extract properties like shape, field count, mean intensity, circularity, and um, many among the 70 plus uh, properties that are available to be extracted and uh, visualize them in a table, again, in almost a one, um, a one line of Mathematica code. 